I'm a big fan of the shonen genre of anime and all of its landmarks. Spiky hair, bombastic battles, and of course, ridiculous length. If you asked me to list off my top 10 anime, I'm sure most of them were Herculean undertakings that I lived in the world of for months at a time. So, what would I recommend for those of you who want social lives and to not hear the same theme music 140 times per season? This video is for you. Let's count down my top 10 bite-sized anime, the stipulation being less than 50 episodes. Without further ado... With one of the most distinct atmospheres ever, and exceptional soundtrack and art, Wolf's Reign is a classic. There's something insanely compelling and thought-provoking about the nearly steampunk world and entirely distinct to mythos Wolf's Reign takes place in. To boot, it's sort of a piece of anime history. After Cowboy Bebop was finished and done, a few of its core creators and remnants formed Studio Bones. And while not their first anime, Wolf's Reign was their first big success. They faced a lot of issues getting it off the ground, but its ultimate success is what got them to work on great shows like Full Metal Alchemist and My Hero Academia. Intense action scenes and some heartbreaking developments wait for you here, but all in the name of hope in the form of paradise. It's a hard journey, but one that you never lose the sense isn't worth the trip. It's a world that's easy to be caught up in, and the characters that, while not insanely developed or nuanced, are memorable in their own ways. It's a spine-tingling adventure I'm glad I took. I can't believe this one flew under the radar the way it did, a take on a classic Japanese superhero with astonishing art and colors, and an insanely likable protagonist. All of this and more you'll get from Gotcha Man Crowds, a show that proves there's no shame in being a tad style over substance. Gotcha Man Crowds takes place on the sort of universal stakes and dread the likes that would make Madoka magic sweat. But from the point of view of a protagonist who's so idealistic and naive that she feels she can handle it, and peacefully even. This show is also home to one of the most unique and memorable villains I've had the pleasure of observing in Bird Cats, who would engage you in a whimsical dance just as soon as you'd find yourself fearing death from opposition. If superhero shows like Tiger and Bunny and Hiroaka are your speed and you like the sound of blending it with the flair of a magical girl like Sailor Moon, add this to the pile. If you want to experience the hardship of high school with, with the funding of federal prison, then Prison School is the anime for you. If you can stomach some really raunchy imagery, you'll get one of the most nail-biting escape thrillers ever. Five precocious young men who are the first to integrate into an all-women's boarding school quickly find that hell hath no fury like a sadistic student council. And what follows is a devastating mental chess in the name of freedom, brotherhood, and character figurines. This show definitely appears degenerate, and it definitely is, but I was fully compelled by the characters and enthralled by the escape plots, as hope looks like the most angelic light and losses look like the most grievous of wounds. Lock yourself behind bars and give it a binge. I don't think anyone expected a show with a face like this one to be as deep or cathartically relatable as a Gretzko, which is becoming the underdog champion of Slice of Life out of nowhere. Don't let the kitty art style fool you, a Gretzko has taught me more about workplace troubles, self-care, and relationships than a lot of self-help media. The story of a 25-year-old red panda trying to make it in the office is more compelling and fun than it even remotely seems, with a cast of characters that's as nuanced as they are endearing. I do think the show jumps the shark just a tad as it goes into further seasons, but it never loses the charm of its incredible ensemble of characters, all of whom bring more to the table than you'd ever guess. Meet me by the water cooler to chat about this modern classic after you give it a look. Stories about absolute units with garish looks finding love are hard to find, and as a member of that community, that's a little disheartening, which is why I adore my love story. These characters make my heart swell to no end, and what you get past that is sheer wholesomeness as you learn about the unbreakable bonds of love and friendship these characters have. As fluffy as it sounds, it has a good sense of humor and isn't afraid to laugh at itself, but never to a point that its meaning is undermined or crossed into the territory of mean-spiritedness. You'll laugh and cry along to every beat of this beautiful story. What you see is kind of what you get, but there aren't many romance shows out there that feel as genuine as this one in my opinion.
Studio Trigger is known for its provocative and outlandish series, most famously Kill La Kill and Gurren Lagann. And while I do like those shows, my favorite anime they've made far and away is the lesser known Kiesniver. Seven young individuals who have a hard time relating to other people are roped into an experiment that involves them wearing wristlets that cause a lot of them to share physical pain. This may sound like something that would die down sort of fast, but the story escalates as by sharing pain, these outcasts learn to share experience and that none of them have to endure what they do alone. It's the kind of show that despite being incredibly colorful and fast moving with a quick sense of humor, it reminds you that everyone is going through something no matter how weird or different they may seem. It's an anime that's entirely its own flavor that I think any fan should watch. It deserves more attention than it gets. Hobby anime are neat because you get to learn about a creator's interests and fixations and maybe get into them a bit yourself, and it really impresses me when one gets me into a topic I never thought I would, which is the highest praise I can give, how heavy are the dumbbells you lift. This show isn't interested in shaming anyone's body or lauding health values, it's a genuinely informative piece that really helped me understand my own body and the benefits of exercise. The characters are hard not to love, the writing is hysterical, and the stories are charming as can be, with occasional streaks of outlandish bombast. Pop it on to make your next workout breeze by and get lost in this colorful, uplifting series. There's a lot of Lupin media, and I've enjoyed all I've surveyed, but none thus far more than the 2015 iteration, The Italian Adventures, which sees Lupin and friends taking a sabbatical in beautiful Italy, where more treasures to chase await. Central and special to this adaption is an all-new character, Rebecca, Lupin's fraud wife, who grows attached to the phantom thief for the thrills that seem to follow him wherever he goes. Meanwhile, you'll see Jigen liberate the poor, Goemon's sordid history with a fellow assassin, Fujiko at her ace disguise best, and even more mind-bending Sherlock-esque plots and capers led by the ever-endearing Lupin in one of his most stunningly animated and entertaining endeavors ever. This show barely qualifies, just scraping against my maximum of 50 episodes with 39. But Revolutionary Girl Utena is not only its own wonderful flavor of anime, but it's so much that I look for. Utena's chief traits are its theatricality and highly artistic individuality, like an anime series put on an extravagant stage with chorus singing along in intermissions bookended by shadow puppets. I had never seen such a unique way for an anime to tell a story. The show can be downright abstract, but it feels very artistic and intentional, like a long-devised piece. And outside of all that, the series isn't without its wonderful characters and compelling stories of love and conflict that are punctuated by intense sword fights. However, Utena feels unapologetic and unafraid to tackle topics its contemporaries would never. We see discussion of statutory rape, homophobia, and discovering sexuality, teenage pregnancy, gender fluidity, the list goes on. The director of the show, Kuhiko Ikuhara, is a veteran of a very beloved pedigree to me, Sailor Moon, a show that always dipped its toes in similar topics to these, but was too public and executive clipped to go all out. You can tell this is the intentions cut loose, facing societal issues and commentaries you know that the creators have been itching to for ages. It's an unforgettable series that shamefully brushed under the rug. Part of me wishes more anime would take influence from Utena's fearless theatricality, but I don't think you can emulate its magic. It's a must-watch in my book. And before I talk about our champion, I'm gonna rattle off some honorable mentions. The ones that have a strong case but just didn't quite make the cut. Recreators, Mob Psycho 100, Inuyashiki, Made in Abyss, Zombieland Saga, Doro Roro, Azumanga Daio, Silver Spoon, Tiger and Bunny, and The Devil is a Part-Timer all made this list hard to narrow down but the numero uno stands. It is bizarre how it almost feels as though somebody reached into my brain to create High Score Girl from concepts that would resonate so strongly with me. What could have so easily just been an anime about video games manages to do so and create a feeling of distinct and precious memories about video games. From the first time you beat your longtime rival in Street Fighter, to staying out of the rain by surviving as long as you can in Final Fight, the writing of High School Girl has such a deep understanding of gaming culture 
that goes far beyond the really easy Big Bang Theory-esque jokes that one could expect from a premise like it. If you don't understand the significance of Raiden's gibberish in Mortal Kombat or the brown palette swap with Ryu in Street Fighter, this might not click with you. But this show reminded me why video games are such an important part of my passion, and especially during the 90s, an era of mystery where you couldn't just look everything up online or YouTube cheat codes and walkthroughs. The show captures the friendships, shocks, anguish, and joy brought by gaming culture so well that even someone like me, born in 97, felt like I was right there in that Japanese penny arcade in 1994. I adore this show so, so much, but it's also so niche that it's hard to recommend to everyone. But if nothing else, this might be the perfect show to watch to get a glimpse into my brain. There you have it. The 10 series you can get under your belts that are my personal favorites, that you can still go outside once in a while while you're balancing them. And whenever I have 10 more bite-sized recommendations, I might make it tap 10 more. And maybe I'll make one for my less bite-sized recommendations someday. We'll have to see. Uh, until then, thank you for watching. Have a good one.